Hello and welcome to the fifth video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own visual novel style game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering animating our characters and their movement and how they appear on screen. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll find all the assets and scripts that we use in this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So last time when we were animating our fade in screen, I spoke about animating the characters themselves and we can use a very, very similar mechanic, at least on one of them, to enable them to suddenly appear. So the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to allow our screen to fade in and our first character, she's going to fade onto the screen as the first character that is going to talk to us. So that is going to be our focus for the first part of this tutorial. I am going to set the fade in all the way at the back, just so as it doesn't get in the way of us trying to animate any of our two characters here. So let's start with Kasumi Confused. Now, this one is going to be easy because we've kind of already done what we're going to do. So we're going to use the same mechanic as fading. So rather than have the fade screen, we're going to allow our character to fade into the screen, if that makes sense. So what we'll do is we will go to our animation tab. We will click on create. And let's call this, in fact, we'll call this scene01 underscore assume fade in and save. Now the reason I've done that is because we may have multiple animations of Kasumi doing different things. So in this instance, we'll refer to this as scene one, because this is going to be the first scene of our game. Next scene will be scene two, scene three, scene four, however many scenes that we need to do. So much in the same way as we did last time, let's press the record button and let's make sure that our first keyframe is set correctly. So let's have the alpha set as zero. And let's hit the X there. And I want Kasumi to fade in over the course of maybe let's try three seconds this time. So let's go to frame 180. Hit return. And let's set the alpha as 255. Press the X and stop the recording. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here. We're just going to press play, have a look and make sure she fades because we've already been through what all of this does, the exact same settings on our fade in screen. So she should fade in. There we go. And she'll keep doing it, but that's OK. We just have to untick loop time. Right there. So that animation is easy. Like I said, she's going to be the first character that appears on screen for her. The other character. Haruka, I'm now going to place her off screen. So I'm going to take the rec tool right here and I'm going to move her so as she is over here out of sight. So if we press play now, she is absolutely not there. Obviously, because like I said, the little story scenario we're creating is Kasumi's on her own and wonders where Haruka is. So she's there in the class, like now you'd see a text box, where's Haruka? Haruka then slides in. So how do we make Haruka slide into the scene? Because she's always going to be off screen at this point. Well, same as last time. Let's go to animation. Let's go to create. And we'll have this as scene 01. Haruka slide from left. Because obviously she might have a slide from the right if you want to make it from the right. Or we might come back to this scene and have a right sliding animation. So try and be as descriptive as possible, I guess, when it comes to some of these animations uh, and click on save. So we need to set the first keyframe. Uh, so let's press record. And rather than play around with the color, we're actually playing around with the positions this time. So what we'll do is change the X position to zero and then we'll change it back to negative 400. And that will set that first keyframe of her not being on screen. So whatever size screen you have, because remember the canvas is scaling, it means that she will always appear off screen. So how do we get her to slide into the scene? Well, should we do this over the course of two seconds? So we'll go to frame 120. 
and then all we need to do is make sure that she slides in this way and it doesn't matter at this point what you do with um haruka so you could take her on the rec tool and just go mess around with her do whatever none of this will actually happen in the animation it is only the end result of what happens so if we have her here and slide her to there you can see position is now 400 by 400 so everything that we did sliding around and everything doesn't matter one little bit it's only the end result that matters we don't want to change her alpha because we want her to fully stay as she is so what we need to do now is hit the button to stop recording and let's press play and we should be able to see her slide in there we go and obviously she'll keep looping over and over and over and over because we need to untick loop time uh, which is what we'll do right now so haruka slide in from left untick now there is one more thing that we should really do when it comes to Kasumi. Well, it's not vital in, in some sense, but her first keyframe, remember, she is completely invisible. And I guess it's up to you whether you want to keep her visible or not. Um, if you decide to keep her invisible, like so, it may be difficult to kind of work things out. You can still click her on, on this bit here. Don't worry about that. But I think I am going to keep my alpha as full, at least for now. If we come across any bugs or errors, I might change it then. So next thing we're going to do is we are going to have another Kasumi. So we're going to eventually create a script that will switch out this Kasumi for a different one in the same position. So what we can do is hold control and press D to duplicate Kasumi confused. Next thing, we actually need to remove this animator from the duplicated Kasumi because we don't want the animation to play on this one. So remove component. And now let's find a different pose that we can have for her. Uh, let's have eyes closed. And let's have this one here. So we are going to generate the mipmap on this one. Click apply. And then we're going to go onto the duplicate, assuming confused, and drag and drop into here. And we'll call this one Kasumi uh, Angry, I guess, because she looks a little bit angry there. And we're now going to turn this off. So you can see that, yep, we've turned that off and this Kasumi is viewable. So let's talk about what we plan to actually happen in this scene. So if we press play, and we can modify everything in the hierarchy as we go through. So the screen fades in. Actually, before we do this, I've just thought we should probably turn Haruka off. We should probably have Haruka late, actually, because she's coming in late. She looks a little bit flustered. So I've just quickly renamed Haruka as Haruka late. Now let's turn that off. Uh, let's bring fade in down to the bottom and let's simulate the scene that is going to happen. So ideally we need to create a script as well to stop Kasumi fading in quite so quickly, although I suppose that's okay. So Kasumi is there, she's going to ask where is Haruka and next thing you know Haruka is going to slide in and say I'm here. Next thing we need to have angry Kasumi come in and say, what are you doing? What are you doing? So all of that that I've just described then is going to require some sort of programming. And that is what we're going to do in the next tutorial. We're going to venture into the world of c -sharp programming, and we're going to program that little scenario that I just told you about. Obviously, text is going to come after that. And then we go back to the script and edit the text into the script so everything comes together nicely. But yeah, next time, just some nice, easy c -sharp programming to get that little scene come together. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to make sure you stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And I will see you next time.